This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate The Great Comet Venus by David Talbot, 1997, section titled Smoking Star. In arguing for the cometary character of Venus, Velikovsky cited Aztec records suggesting that the planet Venus shared the same title given a comet. The early traditions of the peoples of Mexico, written down in pre-Columbian days, relate that Venus smoked. The star that smoked, La Estrella que Humeva, was Sitlal Choloha, which the Spaniards called Venus. Now, I ask, says Alexander Humboldt, what optical illusion could give Venus the appearance of a star throwing out smoke? Sahagun, the 16th century Spanish authority on Mexico, wrote that the Mexicans called a comet a star that smoked. It may thus be concluded that since the Mexicans called Venus a star that smoked, they considered it a comet. In Bob Forrest's mind, the Aztec references could have nothing to do with what may or may not have happened back in the mid-second millennium BC because the references to Venus smoking come from the 16th century AD. In a number of instances, Aztec records say that the earth shook and the star, Sitlal, Choloha, Venus, smoked. To account for the curiosity, Forrest simply accepts the guess of Alexander von Humboldt, who suggested that the smoke related to the volcano Orizaba, situated to the east of the city Cholula, and whose glow, when seen in the distance, resembled or was symbolically related to the rising morning star. Forrest was apparently satisfied with the first guess he uncovered. All we have are some 16th century records which say, every so often, that the star smoked. But since the smoking seems frequently to be intertwined with earthquake activity, Humboldt's assumption seems reasonable. With that stated, Forrest moved on, never returning to the issue of the Aztec smoking star. A quite different approach would have been to explore the possibility of a broader Venus comet association to see where the available evidence leads. Guided by this intent, Forrest would have quickly found, for example, that Aztec association of earthquake activity with smoking stars belonged to the general mythology of the comet among the Aztecs. Thus, with respect to the comets portrayed in the Codex Vaticanus and Codex Teleriano Remensis, the respected authority on Mexican astronomy, Anthony Aveni, writes, Comets, Sitla Limpopoca, or the stars that smoke, are represented frequently by the surviving historical documents, usually by a stellar image on a blue background with emanating streams of smoke. These usually signify that a person of nobility will die. For example, one picture tells of the death of the ruler of Tenochtitlan following the apparition of a comet. Later, another comet occurs, then an earthquake, all of the nature's events being connected in the Aztec cosmic view. As I hope to demonstrate fully in this series of articles, the connectedness of these images derives from a universal substratum of myth. Appearance of a comet, death of a great ruler, quaking earth not in Mexico alone, but in one ancient culture after another, the sky watchers repeatedly place these unusual themes in juxtaposition. Despite this crucial fact, no comet observed by science has ever justified the symbolic connection. But Forrest seems unaware that the language employed in astrological texts and omens is drawn from ancient mythical images. Following his methodological ground rules, therefore, no records of portents in the sky recorded in the last three millennia would be of any relevance to Velikovsky's argument, even when repeatedly attaching explicit cometary images to Venus. With respect to the image of the planet Venus as the smoking star in the Codex Telleriano Remensis, Aveni offers his own attempt at an explanation. Perhaps a cometary object appeared near the planet. Of course, Forrest could just as easily have cited this guess, then dropped the whole issue. But is there something more worth investigating here? Throughout the Americas, including Mexico, natives called a comet the star with hair, or a long-haired star or a maned star, an appellation that fits comfortably with the global language of the comet. In fact, the long-haired star is the single most common phrase for the comet around the world, and our own word for comet comes from the Greek kometis, the long-haired star. Yucatec Maya dictionaries give as a gloss for smoke star, the maned comet. But curiously, the Aztecs use this very language for Venus. As noted by Velikovsky, 
They called the planet Zante Mokyu, meaning the main star or long-haired star, and not the Aztecs alone, for one finds among the Maya the same enigmatic association of the planet Venus with long flowing hair. A commonly observed Maya hieroglyph is the Caban curl, a flowing tassel or lock of hair repeatedly attached to acknowledged Venus symbols, including the glyph name of Venus itself. To encounter the long flowing locks of Venus, one need only consult available sources. Turn to the Incan language of Venus, for example. I can remember, in the first few days of investigating images of Venus, looking through a standard summary of Incan mythology and encountering the name of Venus as Chaska, translated as the long-haired star, the precise phrase for the comet in the global lexicon. It was instances such as this that continued to fuel my own interests in learning more. According to William Prescott, Venus was known to the Peruvians by the name of Chaska, or the youth with the long and curling locks. Burr Cartwright Brundage tells us that among the Inca, Venus was the radiant star with the flowing hair. The morning star, Chasca, the disheveled one, dispensed stores of freshness and loveliness upon flowers, princesses, and virgins below. She was the deity of the rosy cloud rack of morning, and when she shook out her long hair, she scattered the dew upon the earth. The point here is that Forrest's explanation of the Aztec Venus smoking star association fails to acknowledge converging lines of evidence. Aztec comet as smoking star, Aztec Venus as smoking star, Aztec and Mayan long-haired star as comet, Aztec Venus as long-haired star, Mayan Venus with or as flowing lock or tassel, Incan Venus as long-haired star. Hence. The methodological issue is placed in sharp relief. Here is another way of looking at the issue logically. Around the world there are only a small number of pre-astronomical hieroglyphs for the comet. You could, in fact, count the primary glyphs on the fingers of one hand. Heart, soul of a deceased god king or great leader rising in the sky. Long-haired star. Star with flowing locks, mane, tresses, disheveled hair, beard, hairy tail. Torch star. Ember, flame, smoke, smoking star, train of fire, spark or train of sparks, celestial feather, winged star, soul bird, bright feathers, feathered headdress, shining bird's tail, cosmic serpent, dragon, or similar monster. The remaining general hieroglyphs for the comet could be counted on the fingers of your second hand. They include a sword, a bundle of grass or straw, whisk, broom, or a spiraling rope, cord, tie, or knot. At what point, then, does a coincidence or seemingly irrational use of language, comet words or glyph attached to Venus, become an anomaly worth pursuing? Forrest not only sidesteps the implications of parallel cometary images of Venus in other lands, he ignores the convergence of such images in Mexico. As a methodology, the approach is disastrous, because there is much, much more.